And so, and, and is that how you form your clinical trials? Or is that uh, something separate? It could go either way. So, meaning that you could do a clinical trial, and you could pull a sample, and it could be banked. Or mm -hmm. you don't have a treatment trial, and you bank it. So, and then the sample could be used to analyze, to understand. Well, eventually, it will lead to diagnosis or treatment. But mm -hmm. there's always, there's a step here. Sometimes you take a sample, and then, yes, you could go in to directly answer a certain particular treatment questions okay. or developing a treatment. But a lot of time, it's a two-step. You take the sample, you confirm the biological or genetic changes that we think is important that's triggering inflammatory breast cancer. And we have a lot of these artificial animal experiment or uh, cell culture, you know, like mm -hmm. in Petri dish experiment. But we don't want to just take this data and say, hey, let's go into human beings. So we confirm with the sample. And then once we confirm with these bio samples, then you go to the treatment. Actually. Can a patient who was not treated here have their sample transferred? That's not simple. <laughs> I would think not. I would think it's quite complicated. Yes. Uh, so it's not, we're not trying to make it complicated, but the priority goes to the protection of the privacy of the patient. Correct. And the sample is used uh, correctly, and we handle the sample correctly. So we have a bank, and for us to administer a bank, you have to have people who really oversee the bank from my side. And the other thing is that what we call institutional review board, sometimes people hear this IRB, mm -hmm. which is an independent uh, committee who oversees us that we are doing an ethical research or ethical reason to collect the samples. Okay? All right. So so this entity, that two entity that regulates the biobank, is under you know, currently, you know, with MD, not under, but with MD Anderson. So anybody who comes from MD and comes to our patient, yes, we could guarantee, ensure everything is done correctly. Now, if it's done in another place, they have their own banking or their own IRB, and then if we want to transfer, we the two bank or two system have to agree upon. So it's not that one patient could just say, okay, let's just transfer the patient because mm -hmm. it involves many parties. Now, probably it could be sorted out, but the question is, where do you want to put your effort and resource, actually? Uh, so if we are going to move a sample, there's a need for more of a consortium effort that uh, – that you don't waste a resource because you could spend a lot of legal work and then to move a sample and you only get one sample and you know you, it's not really good. So, so these are the things that needs to be sorted out. It's interesting because a patient I think doesn't realize that when they choose where they're getting their care, they're mm -hmm. basically voting where their samples are going to be by where they choose to have their care be. Yes. That and is. and so that's to me a real simple way to break this down and. Um, I really try strongly to encourage women to be as close to the research as possible with inflammatory. That, that is correct. So, so if you have a diagnosis of inflammatory breast cancer, if possible or financially or time-wise that's allowed, it is better to go to a large IBC specialized clinic, which is driven by research. Because mm -hmm. once you commit your sample to there, it's easy to say, yes, we could move around, but mm -hmm. it's not that easy to really to make it happen. So uh, so we talk about it's about 2% of a, you know, a breast cancer. It's already not a common situation. So so it's kind of a – I'm not saying that I, I don't want the patient to make a decision based on biodepository, but to get the best care, you want to get a research-driven care because the current care is not satisfactory and you need to think about it, you know, mm -hmm. because we have too many, not too many, but there are IBC clinic, quote-unquote IBC clinic, and they only see four cases or five cases per year, and we have a problem with that. Well, uh, that would be difficult. That would be very difficult uh -huh. because with inflammatory being such a unique cancer, mm -hmm. I would think the experience would be very important. And one thing that really was shocking to me about inflammatory, and you can confirm what I'm saying, mm -hmm. hopefully I'm saying this properly, is you can have IBC in one breast, and those nodes on that side be fine and clear, mm -hmm. but the nodes on the other side of the breast, the other side of your body, are mm -hmm. infected. And that's not what people tend to think of mm -hmm. about breast cancer. Mm -hmm. So you've got this very complicated, very sneaky kind of disease, mm -hmm. and so to be as close to the expertise, I think, is, is important. Right. And coming to us doesn't mean that you're 
committing our to us. Mm -hmm. We we like to work with your local physicians, uh, and we're not trying to uh, get you stuck in in Houston mm -hmm. area. So if anything that the treatment could be provided appropriately mm -hmm. at your local area, we will work with your local physician. I mean, see, we, we never like, okay, well, you come here and then you never go back to your local. That doesn't happen with see, us. See, that's very good to know because I think that's a very frightening thing to be thinking mm -hmm. about. Here I've got this really rare disease. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to travel across the country, mm -hmm. and then I'm, I'm married to that care there. Mm -hmm. And hopefully you can have the best of the treatment protocol that's been learned and in the, in, in the research here and then maybe get what you need locally too. That's and correct. that's going to help share knowledge right. Right. and improve the landscape of IBC right. and we globally. Have, right. So we have people who came from like Oklahoma and then I end up talking with a local doctor and we mm -hmm. get an opportunity to discuss about what we could offer and what we need to pay attention and patient goes in back and forth. I mean, some cases that's not possible because it's a certain type of clinical trials. You have to be physically in Houston. Mm -hmm. But I want you to, you know, the, the listener to understand that you're not married. You're not fixed because you came to us. I mean, we will try to work with your local doctor. And well, that's good to know because it's just like when you when you first, I saw the movie 50-50, mm -hmm. and I know you saw it too, and you mm -hmm. talked about how much you liked it, but I remember when the young man was told he mm -hmm. had this very rare cancer, mm -hmm. it instantly went like he was underwater, and mm -hmm. everything went blub, 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 mm -hmm. and I know I felt that way when I was mm -hmm. told, and you've had cancer, mm -hmm. right. so I don't know how you felt, but I remember once they said that word, mm -hmm. I didn't hear anything for the next 15 minutes, mm -hmm. so now you've got all these major decisions to mm -hmm. make, right. and so it, I was very blessed to live in the Houston mm -hmm. area, and so some of my decisions are made for me mm -hmm. kind of simply for, ge for my geography. Right. But still, though, to know that I can come here and get what I need and maybe get some things back home, that, that's good to know. Right. I mean, MD Anderson, the way we practice, is not just for inflammatory breast cancer. Uh, we are not here to, you know, for you to just stay in Houston. We recognize that you could come from other parts of the world. Uh, but I do want also people to understand that when people want to come and seek for opinion, it's not a one-day trip for sure. Also no. because, because some people think you could just come and look the picture and then bye-bye, and then it's not that simple because well, you, you, you have to put thought together. But once everything, the thought is put together in the blueprint for what needs to be done, then we could actually start separating what could be done in Houston, what cannot be done in Houston, or you should go home. And those are the, the, the routine you know, practice that we do at MD Anderson. Just now you said the word blueprint. I kind of lit up at that because one thing mm -hmm. that I saw, I'm a triple negative mm -hmm. ibc -er, mm -hmm. and I had general breast cancer by other breasts. You said mm -hmm. blueprint. That's one thing that I think is very important for women to understand that the treatment for IBC is not a one-size-fits-all breast cancer. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very custom to your particular uh, need right. for your particular illness. Right. Like with me being triple negative, right. that added another caveat mm -hmm. to my care. Right. So I usually words this, use this word blueprint for my patients because many of the patients would like to have everything done quickly. Right. And I, I recognize, you know, the compelling situation and emotionally it's frustrating, anxiety is high. But I, I usually explain about this blueprint because it's like building a house. So once we start something in mm -hmm. the middle of building a house, you don't want to change the blueprint. No. That, because generally it doesn't come out very, you know, of course if the blueprint is wrong, it should be corrected. But so one of the reasons we spend time working with many other faculties or specialists or uh, getting additional samples or getting picture is to get this right blueprint so that we could start correctly. I understand that feeling of wanting uh, to do the fast. So when I was diagnosed, if I could have gone home and done a kitchen table mastectomy, right. believe me, right. I would have. I wanted my breast gone so fast. Right. I think I'm one of the few women who skipped into my mastectomy. I could not wait right. to get that done after knowing what my breast was doing to my health. Right. But uh, when I was, it was explained to me, this is the plan, and this is what we see, and this is why we do what we do. Mm -hmm. It gave me a lot of confidence to, to do that six months of chemo and then to be seeing my breast, which was a dramatic-looking breast, right. get more normal and look healthy again and to right. see it working meant a lot to right. me. And it, it really, confidence. this concept applies even for non-inflammatory breast cancer. If somebody said, we're just going to take out your breast, you know, mm -hmm. in three days, and if you haven't really have a planning done, something is not right. 
How can people reach you to find you? If they, We talked about the book. We can get the book through Amazon. They can go on the Facebook page for the Morgan Welch Clinic. Right. MD Anderson has a patient self-referral page. Yeah, so if is, you put my name in MD Anderson, well, there's probably a lot to come out. But, but <laughs> if you come to MD Anderson website, <clears throat> which is www.mdanderson.org, mm-hmm. And if you put my name, then the contact will come up, actually. And patients can self-refer or a doctor can refer? And then uh, once you have MD it- Anderson is a self-referral. I mean, of course, it's very helpful if your doctor refer because we could get the right information fairly quickly. But that doesn't limit yourself. I mean, that doesn't limit that you can't refer yourself. Yes, you could contact yourself, and we're happy to do- have a self-referral, actually. And from what I understand, you're getting, you get a call within 48 hours. They help set your appointment time, so there's not a huge lag time, which I thought was pretty fast. Right. I thought that was amazing. Correct. I mean, some people even think 48 hours is not fast enough, but generally there's not in breast cancer that, you know, emerge. I mean, it's, it's always con- concerning for the patient, but 48 hours, you know, we will get back to you. So. That will get back to you and get you set up. Right. Well, Dr. Wayna, thank you for covering some of the things with this kind of a basic 101. Okay. We've covered, you know, what a newly diagnosed patient would do, should do. We've covered mm-hmm. the, the symptoms of IBC. Mm-hmm. We've covered uh, some thoughts about reconstruction. Uh, we've talked about how they can reach you through the Facebook. Uh, there's a Cancer Wise newsletter. Mm-hmm. There is also Indy Anderson. We've even discussed biobanks. Mm-hmm. Yes. Is there any parting comment that you would like to leave our audience? about um, inflammatory breast cancer. So once again, if you suspect, you should go to the primary care physician. If you really strongly suspect it's breast cancer, you need to see a breast cancer specialist. If your antibiotic is not working, you should have a workup to make sure it's not inflammatory breast cancer. If you're diagnosed, you need to go to a, a large IBC uh, specializing clinic. And if you could get on an IBC-specific clinical trial, that's the most ideal treatment options. Well, thank you for being with us today. You're listening to Dr. Wayno. He's the Executive Director of the Morgan Welch Inflammatory Breast Cancer Clinic at MD Anderson. And my name is Terry Arnold, and I am an IBC survivor and the founder of the IBC Network. Thank you for listening.